All right, I hope you're ready for some excitement. Today we're going to take a look at the closure cones, uh, number 10, uh, lazy sequences. So let me jump in here and open up this file and we're going to copy it right into light table. Here we go. So lazy sequences. I'm going to delete this meditations function real quick. Let's just look at each of these expressions. Um, here, let's look at the first one. There are a wide range of ways to generate a sequence. What is a sequence? <laughs> first of all, I don't know. Let's, let's see. Let's find out what this is. I guess a list is a sequence. A vector is a sequence. What's going on here? Um, so we've got range from one to five. So what is that going to give us? Here is a way to cheat. Let's see exactly what that gives us. Range, one to five. Huh, so it gave us the numbers one, two, three, four. It looks like it gave us a list, at least it can be represented here as a list, where it started with one and it went up to, but not including, the five. Okay, so we got this one to pass. We cheated, no problem. That's acceptable. This is all about exploring and uh, learning about how this works. Okay, for now, let's look at the next one. The range starts at the beginning by default. So what's the beginning? Is that like one, I guess? Again, is it just gonna be one, two, three, four, up to, but not including the five? Hmm, maybe not. Uh, what's the beginning, zero? Is it the beginning of zero? Hey, yeah, that worked. <laughs> okay, so if you don't pass the, the beginning, I guess it's just gonna be zero. So range five did return five elements from zero up to, but not including the five. Cool, so that's pretty handy way to express a, a long list very easily. Um, all right, so it's important to only take what you need from a big sequence. So here's a, a sequence, it's not that big, but it's a, a, we're looking at a vector with 10 elements in it. And that's the result of calling, or that's the same thing as what gets returned from calling the take function with some parameter. And then this range 100, that's gonna return back a sequence with 100 elements in it. And I guess we're just gonna take the first 10, right? We take 10 out of that. Yeah, so, well, I don't know what's going on here. I mean, this was a, this was a list, right? But then a vector, I, <laughs> hmm, I guess they're not really that different. They're kind of treated in the same way here, at least by the equals function. Okay, so you can also limit results by dropping what you don't need. Drop, okay, a new function, drop. So given a, the same big lazy sequence of 100 elements, if we drop, what, 94 of them, 90, something like that, we should get back just the last five elements here. So um, what do we drop? Do we drop 95? Yeah, counting to zero. Yeah. Yep, okay, so if we... We can, we can drop any number of elements just by calling the drop function. And what gets returned is whatever was left, whatever was remaining after that, whatever followed that. Okay, so we saw the take function and the drop function, those kind of go together. Iteration provides an infinite lazy sequence. Now that sounds pretty cool. With lazy sequences, you could have, you could have infinite lazy sequences. Sequences that just go on forever. Now, how's that possible? Well, <laughs> it's possible thanks to the laziness. It's not an actual list that's, uh, for instance, it's not a, a list that's uh, fully stored in memory. Rather, it includes like a function that tells you how to, how to get the next element, how to get the element after that when you need it. Uh, so it doesn't actually store all that infinite number of data. It just stores how to get the next element as an example. So here we've got an iterate function and we're telling it start with zero and then here's the function to apply to get the element after that. So the function here is inc. 
I think inc is just going to increment the given number. So here we're going from 5 to 6. So increment just increments the given number by 1. And when we keep on doing that, starting with the, uh, the given number 0, we get an infinite sequence that just keeps on counting up from 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and it can keep on going well past 100 like we saw here. It can go on forever, I guess. So if we just use the take function on that, we say take 20 from that infinite sequence, what do we get? I think we're going to get back the same thing as calling range of 20. Yep, sure enough. Rather than having me type out all those 20 numbers, <laughs> for short, I'll just type range 20. Now, let's look at another example. Repetition is key. Okay, so we've got the repeat function here, and it looks like the result is this, this sequence of 10 A's, keyword A's. So if we call repeat, telling it, give me 10 of this element repeating, that's what it's going to do. It's going to give back a big list with that element repeated the number of times you, you requested. That's definitely a handy function. That's a very simple way to construct a big list like that. So that'll come in handy. Um, all right, next one. Iteration can be used for repetition. Uh, yeah, I guess so. So what's going on here? Um, we've got a sequence here where it's repeating the foo keyword 100 times. Uh, that's pretty big. And however, it's going to be equal to taking the first 100 elements from calling this iterate function. Now, what, <laughs> what is the function here where you give it foo and it returns foo? It just returns another foo. It's just repeating it over and over and over. So that would be the identity function, a function where you give it an element and it just returns that same element. We can call that an identity function. So let's write it out real quickly here function of n is just going to be n. Now that passed, so we wrote our own little identity function, but what you can also do is refer to closure's identity function that's already built in. So identity is an, a function that's already defined in closure, and we can just reference it here. So cool, we got that one to pass. Repeat can be also expressed by the uh, iterate function with a take. Okay, maybe that'll be useful, but it was interesting to see how the iterate function works. Um, okay, cool. So that was just a quick introduction to lazy sequences, but it's a really cool feature in Clojure, and man, it's going to be used all the time. So, cool. I'll see you on the next video then. Let's keep on learning.